Good afternoon and welcome to the Senior Hour, which is sponsored by Providence Holy Cross Medical Center and Comfort Keepers in Home Care. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Thomas Pulucky, on your hometown station, 98.1 FM, AM 1220 KHTS. This is a show for, about, and by seniors, giving information to enhance one's quality of life. And our first guest this afternoon is the one and only Kevin McDonald, who's the CEO of the Santa Clarita Valley Senior Center. What's up? Hey, nice to be with you. Nice yes, to be with you both. Yes. It's good to have you back, Kevin. Thank you. So what's going on over there at the Senior Center? We are celebrating. Yes, This is I a month of know. celebration. Woohoo! <laughs> um, first thing we're celebrating, we're celebrating five years since we opened up Bella Vida, the hub of senior activity for Santa Clarita Valley. Beautiful and, uh, facility. Yeah. And we reflect back on what it took to get there on opening day. It was April 24th, 2019. And all the efforts and all the people in this community that came together. It was We were at a, a county facility on Market Street yeah. for many, many, many years. And we many had out years. grown that. And when I first came on, I was in a trailer there mm. with... Uh, one trailer had no restrooms. We had one restroom for the entire place. And it was over near Hart Park. And we were grateful for the time we were there, but we were also ready to go. And uh, the planners, the board of directors, and Peggy Rasmussen and different teams of people got together and said, can we raise the money in this community to build a new center? And then magic started to happen. Yes, you know? it did. And Absolutely the city did. of Santa Clarita came through with some major support. And the county of Los Angeles came through. And then we looked into the community and end up getting 1,000 people, 1,000 individuals donated to make it all happen and raise $11 million. Wow, that's awesome. And we opened it debt-free uh, in April of 2019 and didn't know what was going to happen and how right. many people were going to come. <clears throat> well, in all fairness, it was good timing. I mean, I know it was horrible as far as the, what the pandemic did to you know the lockdown and everything, but you got it all done before it prices tripled <laughs> right 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 so, no, we did. We did. so congratulations five years five years five years in there and you're right we opened it up for the first year and uh, welcomed people in and it was going crazy busy uh, a year later covid uh, had to make an announcement that covis was at least closing the building down to seniors not to the staff and we started our famous drive through service so no one missed a meal and then Meals on Wheels almost tripled during that time. We were serving 800 meals a day to Meals on Wheels folks during the height of the pandemic. Yeah. So nothing ever stopped. Our kitchen crew was in there. Our staff was in there every day doing it. And then it was nice to post-pandemic to reopen again and see if the crowds would return. And I just left there and, you know, it's 12 o'clock. It's buzzing. I mean, right. upstairs is full. Downstairs is full. The classes are full. The lunchroom is full. The parking lot is full. It's just, it's wonderful just to see. And, uh, just people bring some great attitudes. Yeah. You know, it's not that, like they're looking for something. They're just looking for that companionship and camaraderie and some good food. And they're laughing in the hallways. Oh, you are and, kidding. And taking these classes and they're doing some sort of Zumba thing, which I didn't really get, but they they were, they were all doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. So the, as you just said, the senior center is so much more than just the wheels on meals, but I do want to focus on that a little bit because the that's meals on wheels, not yeah. wheels on meals. Is that what I said? Yes, that's what you <laughs> said. <Right>? Okay. <laughs> um, I do want to focus on that a little bit because I, as busy as you are, as much as you do for this community, I think it's still a little bit underserved. It is because there's folks that are homebound that need a meal, and through this station and other means, we need to reach out to them. We need to know there's a meal available through the senior center if you are truly homebound and 60 and over in this community, wherever you are, and somehow we have to reach that population that doesn't know how to get in touch with us and say, Can, do I qualify for a meal? And we'll have a social worker talk to you and, and check it out for you and get it out there. Because I know there's people that just not, not out in the community that much. Yeah. Of course, because they're homebound. Right. And thus the name of it. And thus Meals on Wheels America, Meals on Wheels California. And then we incorporated Meals on Wheels for Santa Clarita Valley and Antelope Valley to say, if you're homebound, we're here for you, and we don't have waiting lists, and we're going to go serve you. That um, is amazing. We, we need to reach out. We need every person to think who's in your community, who's in that, that residential area that you're in that may be homebound, maybe they need a meal, right. and we can deliver it with, with one of our great volunteers. Yeah, you know, there's usually one person on every street. Mm-hmm that you don't really see that much of. You might see once in a great while, 
And you have to wonder, you know, are they really okay? And so, you know. Yeah, it's going to take each and every one of us to, to look and be observant and give us a call and say maybe they need a meal and we're happy yeah. to uh, stop by and see what we can do for them. That is the one of the beautiful things about Santa Clarita um, that, you know, when we lived in Sherman Oaks for several years, um, we didn't know our neighbors. Like, you know, it would be rare for us to actually do more than just say hi in the hallway or mm -hmm. something like that. Right. Um, in Santa Clarita, it's completely different. It's like a, almost the land that time forgot. Mm -hmm. um, there are actual neighbors here that you actually know, and you know their kids, and you know their extended family. And um, when we first got here, uh, for whatever reason, the kids in the neighborhood just adopted us and started like coming into our house and into our refrigerator. And what I swear one time, one of the little girls from across the street was in my wife's closet. And when Tony, you know, it was okay. It was fine. When Tony asked her what was going on, she was like, I'm shopping. <laughs> I was like, I love it. I love it. And you, you know, that just did not happen in the mm. San Fernando Valley. So the community in Santa Clarita is very strong. And, you know, to to, to what you were saying before, would you have a thousand people raised $11 million for you? Yeah, 1,000 people along with the county and the city. And they all came together to raise $11 million altogether. Unbelievable. What a, what, what a community. And uh, like I said, keep your eyes and ears open. Someone just told me a story at the station about their, their mother broke her femur. Mm. And I wish my question should have been, does she need Meals on Wheels? Yeah. And maybe that's what we have to target to. Yeah. Those people who get injured or coming out of the hospital and they're going to be home for a while. And, and do they need a meal and do they qualify? And yeah. we'd love to we'd love to deliver for them. We have uh, 110 volunteers that are out there uh, yeah. delivering those meals on 20 different routes. So you'll see our little cars, our Subarus and our Toyotas out there. And they Every are, day. They Every are day. such friendly people. Mm -hmm. I get meals delivered on Monday and Friday. Mm hmm because I don't drive anymore, right. and so and my kids don't always aren't always able to come down, you know, and um, they're, they're always a smile. Always, hi, how are you doing today? You know, right. enjoy your meals. Here's an extra one. And that's yeah. it. There's a guy named Carl we have who drives for us, and a uh, lady who he delivers to wrote us a, a private note saying. I love when Carl visits me because she looks forward to him knocking on the door. That's yeah. her. That's her socialization. Is he the, is he the white headed guy? No, he's actually dark headed guy. Dark, <laughs> there's okay, a, there's a few dark headed guys left in the world. <laughs> 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 um, but her recognition and her wanting to see Carl every day because Carl just gives her that great smile and a few words and that yes, gets her they're, on. they're all every one of them who've come to my house have been so friendly. There was two volunteers. I asked them what they were doing because they were in the library before they're, and I was like, what are you doing? They said, oh, we're making these flower arrangements because it's one of, one of the people's birthdays today that's on our route. And they're going to make sure that uh -huh. they get their birthday is honored because who knows who's going to honor their birthday if you're homebound right. and you don't have family. But it's our drivers who start adopting people uh -huh. in, a, in, a, in a sense to make sure that happens. So, Love it. Again, let's get that word out in this community. If you are homebound and over 60, we want to get you a good, good hot meal. T today is a turkey parmesan. I just saw the, met with the chefs, and I was like, oh my goodness, it was good looking. Yeah. yeah. So I'll get it when I get back. <laughs> okay. So, I I hear what you're saying, but if it were me, I'd be like, okay, sounds great. How do I do that? Like, how how do how do I register or qualify? How do I find out whether I'm good for it, or how do I help someone who may be homebound but just isn't able to do the next step and whatever make the mm -hmm. connection what, what does that you can, look like you can walk in the senior center because there's a desk right now that i just left and there was 10 people surrounding this desk with two mm -hmm. of our staff there meeting those needs and taking their names and phone numbers and getting the application done okay you can call the senior center and we'll hook up with the social worker right away okay and, and those are easy ways to do it because they'll take the information over the phone. Yeah, I think that might be the best solution. Mm -hmm. Just a number to call. What's that number, Barb? 259-9444. Awesome. And it's that easy. Just it, make the call. Make the call. They'll take the information and they'll get someone out to assess you and see if you're okay. I love that. That's yeah. nice. We have easy a great peasy. support team. Our, our uh, 
we call them care managers, yeah. and they're the ones that go out into the community and make sure everyone's okay, signs you up for meals, and then you're on it for as long as you need to be on it, and we come back and check on you every six months to make sure your needs are being met. And, I, and they call, too, because yes. I, I get a call almost every day. Yep, they call this, it's a funny thing, it's a funny county program called Telephone Reassurance. So oh, it's reassuring it, that you're okay. Nice. <laughs> nice county term, but it works. And yes, yeah. they get a phone call to say, just yes. to check in, see how are you. I have a lady who's retired nurse for 30 years, and she's making the phone calls for us now. And you're oh, supposed yeah. to talk for a little while, and she's on the phone with them for 20 minutes at a time and just yeah. loving life. And they're loving it on the other end because they kind of have a nurse at their disposal yeah. for a little while. That's a nurse, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I was raised by a nurse, so. You know Yeah, that. yeah. And retirement it, 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 here's the thing about a nurse. Nurses never retire. Right. They might not show up at the hospital anymore, mm-hmm. but they're always a nurse. Right. So, yeah, I think that's beautiful. And you're right, because we have two, two nurses, retired nurses on our staff. One did it for the movie studios for many years and another staff member, and they help out all the seniors throughout the day. Yeah. Trip, a fall, are they're yep. unofficial nurses. Yep. They're down there taking care of things. So we're really, really lucky. What a great profession. Yeah, and, That's to give, and to continue to give back once they retire. Yeah. Now, you know. can we talk about the upcoming event? Sure. What event is that? Well, 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 well. Celebrity Waiter Celebrity Dinner. Celebrity Waiter, our signature fundraising oh, event. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, we don't have our handout a lot during the year, but we have our handout right now. Absolutely. We're looking for support, and it is a, uh, we're really looking for. It's called, the theme this year is California Dreaming. So if you're dreaming about being in California, and we are, and uh, we have 30 tables that are sold, and we still have openings for individuals that want to come in or a sponsor to come in. And uh, we're looking for it'll be a night under the stars. Uh, there's going to be one table, which is the, uh, the sports teams of California. There'll be another, which is a vineyard. There'll be another table that's Disneyland. Uh, I'm leading a table of the rock stars of the 70s from Laurel Canyon. Um, so you never know what you're going to get at Celebrity Waiter. And uh, we brought in a band this year. It's, a, it's called Surfing, a Beach Boys tribute band, the, the Beach Boys tribute band. These guys, they, they come every Christmas to us yes, and celebrate with us and play. And we brought them back for Celebrity Waiter because that's our theme this year. Nice. So they'll be jamming for a few hours out in the courtyard. Uh, great food prepared by our chefs, our own Bella Vita chefs, Cindy oh, Smith yes. and, and Marco Rios. Good. And they're cooking up a storm and our staff are serving. So it's really a Bella Vita event because we're cooking it, we're serving it, and you're in our courtyard. That's and uh, right. we hope to raise quite a bit of money for, yeah. to keep our programs going because a lot of people don't think we're government funded and we are, but there's a big gap that we have to fill every year. Yes, yeah. that's very <clears throat> true. Yeah, those very meals true. aren't free. <laughs> no, and this is one way to do it to come out. And then you're hanging out there and you're having a great meal. And we have a brief live auction, just 15 items, but you can take a cruise. You can get a house in the outside of Boston, Massachusetts on a lake. You can get a condo outside of Park City, Utah during ski season. Uh, lots of different things. You can take a hike with Kevin if you really want to. We'll give you that Aww. number for that. <laughs> um, and lots of other items that they can and do that. And at the end of the day, people make a donation to say, no, I care. Thank you for the meal tonight. And yeah. thank you for you know the service that goes out to the community. And you're, you're spending an evening not just at a great facility with great food and great music, um, but you're spending it with the people who really care about the community. If they're showing up for this event, Mm -hmm. you know you're dealing with some pretty cool people, right? Mm -hmm. So all the tables are are booked, right? But there are still some seats available at some of the tables. Definitely seats available and tables available. We're going to keep going. Oh. But we have sold over 30 sponsorships, so we're really thrilled with that. Okay, so this is not a um, will call event. Like you have to, you have to buy in advance. Yes, right? you have to buy in advance. So, so how does that happen? Just give us a call at that number, and we'll what's take that care number, Barb? Six six one two five nine nine four four four. Awesome. And we just want you to come. It's really a celebration. We're celebrating five years at Bella Vita. We're celebrating our volunteers. We're honoring the National Charity League of this year, which is a, a team of of women and their daughters together volunteering. Um, so we're going to honor them and doing some special, special things. And we're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a great event. Mm-hmm. And it's um, before the real heat of the summer. Right. And it's, uh, we <laughs> didn't even say the date. It's Saturday, April 27th. Oh, okay. Saturday. Saturday next April next Saturday, 27th. April 27th. Uh, we're starting at 5 o'clock and we're jamming throughout the night. And we own the place. So we're going to be open a long time. So There you go. Private um, club. 
Yeah, it is. We're we're private. We're a private nonprofit, and this is uh, under our our skies and our buildings. And uh, we're we're just thrilled because and the staff gets very involved with it. And like you said, every table they bring. You know, one table is our food vendor, mm-hmm. food vendors, and they come and comfort keepers and all these different groups come in and try to support us. And it's like you're right. We're grateful that you know the bigs are coming out to say we care. Yeah. So it's really it's really nice. It's oh, a very it's humbling a, evening a, for us and a lot of gratitude. It and, is. And they know where the money's going to because they've made an investment five years ago in building the senior center, and they see now, boy, my money you used pretty wisely. You guys built a beautiful place, and now we're running it, and we still need the funds to keep running it and making it beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that will never end. Right, right. We're in long term, long term yeah. uh, services for sure. Uh, long term yeah, relationship. It's, it's it's interesting. I I wish my husband could have seen this beautiful center. But your husband started it, and then you know we always say we're you know we go forward on the shoulders of, of people before us, and the people well, help build it, and that's, that's important for us to yeah. remember that this place did not come out of nowhere. It came out yeah. with a group of families getting together in this community, yes, saying we need something for seniors. We're going to make it a private organization so the government doesn't have to run it. We can do it as a nonprofit. Well, it's, and, it's and interesting. your husband and so many well, others did it that way. Well, Russ was a school principal at the time, and he would go into the different classrooms and talk with the kids. And the feedback that he got is, my nanny or my grandma doesn't have any place to go up here. And that's what got it started. Mm-hmm. Russ talked to Antonov- uh, Joanne Darcy and um, Mike Antonovich, mm-hmm. and um, what's her name? <laughs> the woman who got the Woman of the Year last year uh, at your place. Julie Surgeon. Was, no, was, not Julie. Okay. There's lots last of great year. Women of the Year. I'm not oh, sure which yeah. one we're talking. Oh, right. <laughs> so. I can't think of her name. It's completely slipped my mind. But that's that's how it got started. And we're trying to and take it to the next level. Yes. So we thank we thank our people who started it for yes. us. And I, I just wish Rush could have been here to be at the opening. He's looking down now. Yes, and hopefully he he's smiling. is. He wasn't here physically. He he passed away one month before you opened. Okay. All right, Kevin. And, uh, uh, closing thoughts. Anything besides. Celebrity waiter and Meals on Wheels that you'd like to you talk know, about? You know, come and check us out. There's so many resources, so many opportunities for seniors. No matter your level, come and visit us. And, and we'll they take care also of you. have a grief group that is fantastic. Yeah. It really is. Every Tuesday morning you at 10 it. o'clock. And there are so many great women in there. I go to it. And um, it's, it's wonderful because I've lost a husband and I've lost a child. And... Um, we all talk about uh, what's gone on during our day, our week, our prior week. And it's, it's so very interesting. And it, you get to know each other, you know. And, it, uh, just another service. Yeah, yes. absolutely. So uh, one last key service. Is Dial-A-Ride still available for you? Absolutely. Come okay, so how, how, how does that happen? Just again, call the number. Call the number. The... We run it through the city, and we can get you all hooked up with dial Barb, what's the number? Six six one two five nine nine four four four. Awesome, Kevin. Always a pleasure to have you here. I'm I'm so happy that you are running this thing over there at uh, the Santa Clarita uh, Valley Senior Center at Bella Vida. Yes, at Bella Vida. At Bella Vida. Um, such a pleasure to have you, and thank you for all the stuff you do for our senior community. And what's the address? Thank you very much. What's the address? 27180 Golden Valley Road. 27180 Golden Valley Road. You're listening to the Senior Hour, KHTS FM 98.1 AM 1220, hometownstation.com. Welcome back to the Senior Hour. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Thomas Palucky, on your hometown station, 98.1 FM AM 1220, KHTS. And we're speaking now with one of our sponsors, from um, Comfort Keepers in Home Care, the one and only Miles McNamara. There are no imposters out there? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness, huh? <laughs> hey, guys, good to be with you. So what's on the docket today? Well, let's talk anything, all things home care and senior mm-hmm. care and you know, yes. things that you guys want to discuss. Uh, I was, uh, I mean, for, well, I always like to give a quick overview for folks who, I don't mean this in a bad way, that are living under a rock and don't know what home care is or have never had the need for home care. Uh, Because I think I've mentioned in the past that, you know, 
I'm a lot of times approached with people saying, I wish I knew about you before mom passed or we, we yeah. could have used you for dad because, you know, even though it's a couple of decades old, that's in the scheme of things, that's still a relatively new industry. Uh, but home care, basically, is we're not nurses. Um, think about an adult child and how they, you know, split their time with their own lives and running over and making sure that mom's taking her medications on time, had a nice shower, eating a nutritious meal, maybe taking them to a doctor's appointment. That's what my comfort keepers do, is um, we're non-medical, personal attendants, if you will. And a lot of times, seniors just need that helping hand to stay in their own home. Uh, so some choose to go to assisted living. Some want to stay where they've, you know, grown 40 years worth of memories. So we give them that opportunity. So our caregivers can come in, uh, be their comfort keepers for, you know, any array of non-medical tasks. We call them activities of daily living. Um, you know, we also have the instrumental activities of daily living, meaning if we do the, the care plan, cause we do an assessment beforehand, we can help our clients, you know, pay their bills or, you know, return mail or, you know, for people who are still mailing things. Uh, but yeah, so there's, <laughs> there's an array of things that we can do. The biggest thing is, you know, doctor's appointments, not the biggest thing, one of the most important things, because if you, you know, don't do your regular doctor's appointments, I don't know, we're seeing an array of a tidal wave of unfortunate events because folks didn't get their regular checkups during the pandemic. You know, so they didn't get their regular cancer screenings. They didn't do their regular physical. And, you know, that really had an adverse effect on a lot, not only just seniors, but folks that, you know, didn't, you know, catch things early like they could have. Uh, <clears throat> and follow-up uh, appointments are really important for, uh, as I mentioned, we talked offline before the show, is the uh, hospital-to-home transition. Uh, I mean, you are turned upside down when you're in the hospital, no matter how long your stay, day is night, night is day. I had the unfortunate privilege of being in the hospital for almost a month once. And just as you start to get to sleep at two in the morning, they're coming in to check your vitals. You know, the lights are always on. So you, you lose track of time. So getting yes, back home did. and readjusting to your sleep cycle. Uh, but you know, a lot of times there's new medications that have been prescribed, you know, so have we gotten rid of all the old ones, you know, and of course we utilize home health to assist us on that because sometimes the new medications will not nicely interact with the old medications. So out with the old and in with the new, but the biggest thing is, is schedule. You know, are they taking their meds on time once they get home from the hospital? Like I said, if there's an array of new ones prescribed, uh, you know, and then of course, you know, nutritious meals, but you know, on hot days of summer, are they staying hydrated? You know, their personal hygiene, uh, but getting readmitted to the hospital after you've come home from such a stay, how depressing is that? Yeah. You know, uh, and it's a double edged sword. I, I talked to the hospital about this too, is that first with our seniors, I mean, when you, when you finally get home and are discharged to home and you know, you don't take your meds on time or you don't get to your follow up appointment like you should, and you bounce back into the hospital for another week. How depressing is that? Right. So our comfort keepers can really, you know, make sure that the follow-up care once they get back home makes that transition as smoothly as possible. And and the, and the hospitals are all on board with that because they get dinged. I don't know if you all know this, but if someone gets discharged from home and then they get read or discharged to home rather, and they get readmitted to the hospital for the same thing within 30 days. Not only are the seniors coverages you have to you know be careful of, yeah. but the hospital gets dinged and penalized for that as well. Now, really, what the I theory is that. behind that, uh, why that's the the hospital's <laughs> fault, I have no idea. But it's just one of those rules that if if well, and they call it a code, you have a medical code when you go in and you're diagnosed with something. If if not only seniors but anybody gets readmitted to the hospital within 30 days under the same medical code, the hospital gets penalized for that. You know, and then like sometimes it, like I said, it may affect your coverage. So you got to be sure to, to, to watch that. Uh, but that's just the financial side, which is huge, probably more so for the hospital than, than our seniors. But my point is, is the mental health of our seniors. Once, sure. once they get home, uh, you know, obviously if you have family, they can, they can pitch in for a day or two, maybe a week if they're the f schedules are that flexible, but then they've got to get back to work. They've got to, you and know, continue with their own life. And so, one of the, one of the points you made is that your life's turned upside down. If you're in the hospital, you don't, you literally don't know whether it's day or night. Right. And that doesn't instantly go away when you're home. So you may need some overnight help. You're used to being attended to in the hospital. And then when you get home, eh, there might not be anybody there 
to be awake and at your beck and call. And that's a great thing for comfort keepers now. Right, yeah. If the all overnight this, shift. It's jet lag on steroids, if yeah. you know, because, again, your sleep cycle is going to be totally affected. But to your point, yeah, when you come home from the hospital, you've just been looked over, watched over 24-7 by medical professionals and, you know, CNA nurses and, you know, what have you. And now that you're deemed healthy enough to go home, no one's keeping a 24-7 eye on you. Right. You know, so if you don't have family and you That's get discharged right. at home by yourself, you're probably still a little wobbly, so there's slip and fall issues. Uh, you know, there's just an array of things that could go sideways that, exactly. you, know, you know, could put bounce somebody back into the hospital. Uh, and then, you know, that also segues into what we do when someone, you know, hasn't been in the hospital is, is that proactive watchful eye, if you will. You know, because we can always react to issues if mom falls and breaks a hip and she needs some help coming out, you know, that type of thing. But we like to, you know, encourage our clients to be proactive. You know, yeah. don't get in that tub or shower without us there. Make sure my comfort keeper is giving you a hand. Don't, you know, just make sure that we're there. You know, we do an assessment of the entire household. So if there's grab bars that are needed, if there's, you know, get those little ducky stickers on the bottom of your shower floor, whatever it is, you know, that, you know, to prevent slip and falls because bathrooms and kitchens are the two highest slip and fall areas of a house. You yeah, know? and so, I think that may be, Maybe the uh, the most valuable underutilized part of your service, if someone has a slip and fall but doesn't wind up in the hospital, they they don't it doesn't go horribly wrong because I've seen it personally in my own family, where the only reason that my grandmother was found was um, because she didn't answer the Sunday morning call and she'd been on the bathroom floor for a couple days. Oh. So, uh, that, yeah, yeah that, that never really got better. Once you're in that kind of a situation, it's, it's rare that there's a full return to normal living. So, um, let's say it was a much less serious situation, but the person did slip and fall. Or, or or fell. You don't really always know that it's a slip. You know, the person fell. Right. You need to take that very seriously. And that's a time to maybe call you and have the house assessed and find out and maybe give a little bit of respite care for the time being just to make sure. Because if they fall <clears throat> once, it's kind of a warning sign that there may be an issue there. Yeah. And, and just kind of a tag on to that. You said your mom? My grandmother. Your grandma. Yeah, my grandma. Was she was she conscious and just couldn't move, or was she unconscious for two days? You know, we really don't know. Okay. The okay. whole situation. She was conscious when my father went down, broke into the house, and found her. Okay. Because I was going to say, you know, just there's there's levels of of you know, we give free assessments. You don't have to be a client if you just want to pick our brains. But you know, I'm sure you guys for you've seen that commercial. I've fallen and I can't get up. Yeah. You know the oh, you know, yeah. the twenty. She had one of those. Yeah. Okay. Did she but she wasn't it? wearing it. Oh, see that's yeah. Hello, but uh, and that's why a lot of times the slip and falls are in the bathroom and the shower because yeah. everyone thinks they become Superman or Superwoman when you're near the kitchen counter or near the bathroom. You all put my walker over here. No, 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 no. Yeah, keep yeah. it close. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those emergency response systems. So if you do fall and you push that, you got help on the way. Uh, there's just you know one of a, a plethora of things that are out there that we can put in place to, to safeguard our seniors. Well, it's interesting. I would strongly suggest seniors getting a walk-in tub yeah it's it saved russ's life Hell, and I it has one. saved <laughs> my life. oh they're wonderful yeah. absolutely wonderful and i mean you you have you have to step over that high yeah to get in it right well maybe and not everybody can afford that no, bar that's very true um but uh, if you can i would strongly suggest there are some good deals out there for seniors yeah okay. for, to there having are. those make, good. put in but I think everybody can afford those pendants. Oh yeah. And the key is I have that one is on the wall a, yeah that at the, uh, at the tub right at the tub uh, yeah. where I can push if necessary. But if you can't reach it, it's it's still worthless. So I think the the wearable pendants twenty four seven is the way to go. Yeah, they come not only in pendants, but you can wear them like a watch. They're yeah. waterproof. It's yep. like never take it off. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Murphy's Law. Something's uh, going to yeah. happen the minute you it's take it off. It's going to happen when you take it off. And it's really important to do follow-up care after someone falls and you think they're not hurt. Right. Uh, because you never know. I mean, contusions and, you know, that type of thing. I mean, you know, what you know when we fall, 
It's just human nature. What, what's the first thing we say when we fall? Help. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm, good. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> then why the hell are you bleeding down the side of your face? No, it's Cause, all good. Because when you fall, you know, even if you you know you have a you know a head trauma that you're not aware of, and you get a brain bleed, or you know, there's just so no. I'm sure you think you're okay, but you know, when you go into shock, you could not realize that you're you know you're bleeding everywhere. So yeah. if you if you have a senior loved one that does fall, yeah. take them in for a checkup. Have have them looked at. Say, hey, yeah. don't know if she hit her head. Don't know if he did whatever. But don't just take it for granted that they're okay right. because if something happens in the middle of the night because they, you know, hit their head and didn't feel it at the time and they, they you know, go sideways because of a brain bleed, don't take that chance. So, yeah. yeah, we're always, I mean, I see crazy memes on social media where people just go butt over tea kettle. I'm okay. No, you're not. Your arm's yeah. all twisted inside yeah. out. You know, so yeah, always have that checked out. But, you know, don't, don't set your cane or your walker aside in the bathroom or the kitchen. Don't not wear your emergency response system pendant or bracelet, you know, because you know, just always have those things at top of mind. Yeah. That, that's what's so nice about a walk-in tub. You, you're sitting down, you know. And you have that option, yeah. Yeah, you, you sit. They have, they have seats Little benches, in them, yeah. And you can sit down, which is, it's a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. Because when you're standing up in the tub like that, you know, even though the floor is not slippery, you can still fall. Yeah. You can still fall. Yeah. And I don't always fill my tub. I just get in there and use the shower. Right. You know, just to make things quick if I don't want to just soak in the water. But um, it's... And those are a lot of the older homes. I mean, the newer homes in the last 30 years or so, they, so somewhere in the house there's a walk-in shower. You know, back in the oh, day yeah, when there's there is, just tubs and tub showers. Yeah. Of, you know, but I have a walk-in shower too, yeah. but I do not use it. Yeah. And I didn't let Russ use it. It was it was just too dangerous, mm. you know, because I would have to get in the shower with him. And that just did, didn't work. Yeah. A little bit too much walked. information there, but <laughs> 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 this is a family show. <laughs> well, that was before I got uh, home care for him. And long-term care insurance is a very important thing to consider. Yeah, that's a good really point. really is. Because I think we've covered it before, but home care, yes. unless you have long-term care insurance, is private pay. So yes. it can get costly if you have have the ability to get, you know, 40 to 50, maybe 60 if you're fairly healthy is a good sweet spot to buy long-term care insurance to keep the monthly premiums down. But if, if you do the cost analysis, <clears throat> it's going to pay off big time to have long-term oh, care insurance. Oh, it paid off two-thirds yeah. of Russ's home care bill. Yeah. Two-thirds. And it was not cheap. And a lot of home care, uh, I mean, a lot of long-term care uh, not not only covers home care, but other aspects of senior care. Yes. Maybe maybe a portion of your assisted living facility or a skilled nursing facility. Yes. So obviously, like any any insurance, everything's negotiable. So you can you know get the language and the coverage that best suits your needs. Yeah, and I do not want to go to a home care place. I want to stay at home. Yeah, which you're and, like ninety nine percent of our seniors. Like, and that's oh, where you that's where your memories that's, are. That's, absolutely, yeah. that's where you're comfortable. And just like we talk about as, as, you know, we age in place, you know, we, you know, when things change in our lives, like when young couples have babies, they baby proof their house. The same thing as we age in place, we can senior proof senior the house proof the and house. make sure we get exactly. rid of all those darn throw rugs that are going to make you fall, you know, or tangle. Get rid of that baby proofing. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, ex the extension cord <laughs> that you, know, you never paid attention to until you try to get your walker by it, you know, or the Well, door. I use the walker in the house. I wouldn't dare use the sticks because I have two of them. There's too many things that it can get caught on. Sticks? And well, I, do you like walking sticks? Oh, yeah. They're right there. Oh, very cool. Oh, yeah. I yes. tried one, and it, they didn't work. There goes Barbara skiing down and... your hall again. <laughs> Main Street. <laughs> you look like a cross-country cross skier. <laughs> okay, Miles, but we're going to bring you back center. after the break. Okay, and I'll we're be We're going to talk more about comfort keepers. You're listening to the Senior Hour KHDS FM 98.1 AM 1220 com. Welcome back to the Senior Hour. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Thomas Palucky, on your hometown station, 98.1 FM AM 1220 KHTS. And we're speaking with Miles McNamara of Comfort Keepers in Home Care, one of our sponsors, and... Let's keep going. 
Sure, I was thinking off, off air, the, uh, kind of circling back to that hospital-to-home transition. And the hospital will help you out with this as well. I mean, they don't just discharge you out to the parking lot. I mean, they do a good job with their discharge plans. But, um, you know, we work in conjunction with a lot of other medical agencies, One not only on an ongoing home care basis, but especially after discharge. I mean, so our, our comfort keepers not only can oversee the medications, but, you know, once you once you get home, sometimes there's physical therapy. You know, they want you to take three laps around the house. And, you know, they want you to do X, Y, Z. So we can help with that. We can... We we can help with any of the post-discharge care under the hospitals guys as well. Even if it kind of fringes on the medical stuff, we're working in conjunction with hospice or, or home health or physical therapy. So, you know, we have a good relationship with the hospital. And so once you get that discharge plan in place, that's going to go hand in hand with our care plan that we, you know, customize for every client as well. So, you know, I just can't stress enough to, you know, don't plan to fail by failing to plan. Yeah. Bump. So it the there's a big gap between the medical emergency that requires hospitalization and actually being okay. Right? You so, lost me. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Um just because you're not in a hospital doesn't mean that everything's fine. Oh no, I mean you know, for yeah, folks absolutely. Folks want home care because it's they want the companionship. They you know they, they don't want to go out and about. Others have home care because there's not any way they could stay in their own home if they didn't have that extra set of eyes with them. Right. And again, not having maybe their spouse passed away or something happened where you know obviously you know we've we've used the term sandwich generation. You know the adult kids are taking care of their own children. You know so <clears throat> they give what time they have to their parents. You know and they're sandwiched in between the two. Uh, but you know, if someone doesn't monitor all the time, you know, even you know, a few times during the day, or maybe four or five, six hours during the day, and there's some, they can be alone for spurts. I mean, we have clients that we're with around the clock; otherwise, they couldn't stay in their own home. Uh, but we have most of our clients just take a four to eight hour shift. We're there. We make sure everything's hunky dory. That's a medical term, uh, you know, and then, you know, we, you know, when they're okay at night by themselves <clears throat> and, you know, then we come in the next day and, you know, we continue the care plan. But, uh, but yeah, there are, there are folks who have home care because they want it and there's some home care needed and that's why we're there. So right. you're absolutely so you, right. You, you, you threw out some numbers there. So the, I saw, I heard, um, four hours. So four hours is the minimum. Yeah. Yeah, we, we so do have that's... a four hour per visit minimum. And and again, you think about it, I mean, if if unless you have a companionship need, you want to go to the grocery store once a week. Yeah, then we can come in four hours once a week. Mm. But really, what kind of care plan is that? Right. I mean, so again, you have the exception because we have a four hour per visit minimum, but no weekly minimum because we don't want to exclude our seniors that are in that position where sure. they're fine. They just don't drive and they need to get to the store once a week. Yeah. Fine, let's do it. Um, but other than that, you know, what kind of care plan is it just one day a week, four hours a day? I mean, if there's an ongoing hi personal hygiene need, uh, you know, whatever, household duties that need to be performed. I mean, there's just an array of things. And that's all That's all determined at our, our initial assessment. We don't start a case unless we do an, a one-on-one -on -one or with a family uh, home assessment that helps us build that care plan because, you know, one size doesn't fit all. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and maybe for some people, um, that four hours is enough. And unfortunately for some people, that four hours may be all they can right. afford. Exactly. But it's still a beautiful thing to know that that's an option. Yeah. So Miles, I want to personally thank you for being the anchor sponsor of this show forever. And, um, it's been a long time, yeah. hasn't it? <laughs> and, um, For the radio audience, I'm shaking my head. Yes, yes, <laughs> Thank so. you. <laughs> so um, what's the first step? How do people call Comfort Keepers? Well, uh, we're right here on Lions Avenue and have been for the last uh, 22 years. Uh, okay. I also have an office in Encino, so if you have loved ones out there, give us a call here as well. But I'm on Lions Avenue. Uh, our phone number is 661-287-4200. 661-287-4200 or just go to comfortkeepers.com nice pretty website that gives you a nice overview of our home care and if you're hearing this and you have someone your loved one lives in indiana or somewhere not close just punch in the zip code where your loved one lives lives and it'll show you the closest comfort keepers office to that zip awesome. code. 
thank you again so much for being our host and being our sponsor. My pleasure. Our guest and yes. being our sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to the Senior Hour KHTS FM 98.1 AM 1220, hometownstation.com. Now go out and enhance your quality of life.